If you've been tagged in this, it means you're a special work of art, baby. This is the first room that celebrates the birth of my artist career, the birth of my animations, uh, the birth of Spech. Uh, these are some of my earliest doodles ever. Never would have thought anybody would see these sketches. This is a very colorful room to represent the very colorful chapter that I am in. Look at that, he's riding into town like he owns the place. We love him for that. Look at that butt, that's a good butt. Sorry, I'm tugging the phone pretty hard. The blue doodle. The closest thing that you'll get to stepping into my brain in the least gross way possible. And if I do say so myself, look at that. Dude, we love Farfetch. They came in to be a part of the show. Did some sick live painting the opening night, which was a pretty cool feeling. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Dumb dreams and messy hands. I've worked really hard on this one. Follow your dumb dreams. You're special. Korean food has nothing to do with Shanghai whatsoever. Let's not get it confused. But I thought I'd do like a little bit of like a mukbang where I eat and talk about my stories over there. I went there alone, uh, which is really odd. I usually do these trips with a friend or at least somebody that can help me acknowledge how weird and wacky and how foreign everything is, but this trip to Shanghai was just me. It was still uh, nerve-wracking. It was, that napkin's gone. It was still nerve-wracking. It was still like a lot of culture shock, and it was still very isolating. I didn't speak the language and everybody was very nice to me and everybody was very kind and wanted to show me the food, the drink, the local culture. But for the first day or two, I couldn't help but feel lost. And it was cool, like, you know, one of the first things that happened somehow is I started getting my nails done with like my special characters on it. My nails were painted like that for all of uh, the trip, which is hilarious. But, you know, there's so much impulse decision making that gets done on a trip like that. And when you're alone in Shanghai, you just do the most random shit. Go ahead, boy. So, the whole reason I was in Shanghai, of course, is for my big show. Biggest show of my career. Two years in the making, and it kept getting delayed because of COVID. And in the days leading up to the show, I'm wondering, what is this gonna look like? You know, I, I haven't even been able to see it in person. I can't even work on it in person. I'm all the way in LA. How can I possibly, you know, it was, it was all being handled independently for me, which is very odd for a creative to have their project handled on the other side of the world. So I was excited to see what it was gonna look like on opening day. I mean, opening day, for the public, might as well have been opening day for me. It was gonna be the first time that I see the show in person. And I had butterflies. I was excited, but very nervous. You know, I don't even know what to expect. But what made it so much better was the fans. I'm always blown away when I get to meet people that watch my videos in a place as far away as Shanghai. I mean, that's insane. And there was one fan in particular who walked up to me and gave me an envelope. And I opened it up in front of her and in the envelope was a comic that she made. A comic about how she discovered my videos. And she told me that she made this comic, which was multiple pages long. She made the comic on the train ride over to Shanghai. She lived three hours out of Shanghai, and she took the train to Shanghai just to see my show. And during that time, she was creating, she was drawing, and she chose to take that time to make this comprehensive story about how she found my videos. And it was heartwarming. And anytime I get to experience an interaction like that, it really brings me right back down to the root of why I do this whole thing. And it's to make people feel good. And anytime I'm reminded that it's not just pixels, it's not just numbers, it's not just views and comments, it's real human beings with a soul who get joy and, and get value out of these videos that I make. And I guess, who would have thought that I'd be in Shanghai, right? And it's a wonderful opportunity that I get to meet people that I never would have thought I'd get to meet. But shout out to that girl in particular, because that, that comic I will forever cherish. It's really awesome. So the day the show finally rolls around, and it was way more than anything I ever could have imagined. I mean, to see all my artwork that I was used to being 2D 
it was 3D and it was live and it was, uh, you know, in this space that I just never would have imagined it would be with all these people interacting with it. And the show broke all previous records at K11. They said, wow, there were over 1,500 people that showed up tonight. And I said, oh my God, that's incredible. I had no idea. It's a lot of people, but still not knowing if that was a lot or not. And they still looked at me and they said, no, that broke all previous records. That was definitely not something that I was expecting to come out of this trip. And there's a lot of crazy feelings, but the craziest feeling is knowing that it's still up and over there. And there's still thousands of people a month going to the exhibition that I created, enjoying themselves and creating memories with their friends and families, and smiling and, you know, reading about my art and watching my videos that maybe they haven't seen before. And if they have seen it before, they get to chill with my characters in real life and take selfies and photos with them. And there's this whole section that really just ties everything together where it shows some of my earliest sketches ever that I never would have thought anybody would have seen. I mean, these were sketchbooks that I had just like while I was a teenager. Now they're hanging up at my own exhibition in K11 uh, in Shanghai. And whether it's a sketch from a sketchbook that I never thought anybody would have seen, knowing that all these pieces of art along my journey and along my timeline have acted as checkpoints in me, growing as a person and growing as an artist, and then leading up to a checkpoint as massive as my own show in China, my solo artist show in the biggest art mall in the world. It just reminds me that even when you think your story may be done, even if you think you've experienced it all, there's always new things to experience, and life has a way of surprising you. Such as me eating pig brain for the first time, and probably my last time. Yeah, I went to Hot Pot and I ate pig brain. It was interesting. Don't be afraid to try new things. So all in all, I would say this has been a pretty successful Cool Man summer. I threw some of the biggest events of my artist career, uh, met a bunch of incredible people that I never would have thought I would have met and started painting again and made some of my favorite animations that I think I've ever made so You know, I feel like everything is right where they should be and That's a good feeling and I'm looking forward for more so stay tuned We're entering autumn and I think that's always a very special time of the year in all of our lives so You're special. Don't forget it and have a nice day.